Hi there, my name is Mark, and this is a DIY tutorial to make a controller for the Alex Mills 3-axis gimbal. And we're going to be using this, uh, not to play video games anymore, but to actually be that controller. And it's perfect because it has two analog joysticks, a bunch of buttons, people love analog, people love buttons, so it's got everything you'd want. Uh, the important thing to know about this is it works with any 3-axis gimbal that runs the Alex Mills software and has a Bluetooth adapter. So that means that whether it's the Pilotfly Funny Go that I reviewed a few months ago, or a big DSLR rig, or a quadcopter, it doesn't matter, it'll work with any of those. From the DIY perspective, this is also a really easy DIY. There's no soldering involved at all, and literally, it's kind of like Legos with a screwdriver. So I've even written all the software for you, so you don't even have to write any software. You just upload it and you're ready to rock and roll. Like, how great is that? You also end up with something that's really durable. A lot of DIY projects are kind of, you know, sensitive and fragile. This is not that. You end up with something that has amazing build quality that you can dazzle all your family and friends with. And it allows you to do things with the gimbal that you really couldn't do before. So you can now have a second person actually be the camera operator, which is very cool. So I'm going to show you the features next and kind of try to get you hooked. And if it's interesting, keep on watching and I'll be showing you how to build it yourself. Then hopefully you'll shoot a whole bunch of cool videos and upload YouTubes, uh, YouTubes of them and uh, say thanks to me. There are only two parts. The first is the DF Robots Wireless Gamepad 2.0 for Arduino. And the second is also from DF Robots, their Bluetooth B Bluetooth Wireless Module. As most people know, I love me some unboxing videos. So I have to highlight some of the quality and workmanship that went into these boxes. Okay, I lied. I hate unboxing videos and any time spent on packaging is a waste of time and money. On the front, there are two LEDs, a red one on the left for power and a green one on the right showing if it's connected to the gimbal or not. It typically only takes a couple of seconds for a connection to be made. The analog joystick on the left controls the pan and tilt of the camera. The more you move the joystick, the faster the camera will move. The analog joystick on the right works in a similar fashion, but when you release the joystick, the camera returns to its original position. The numbers on the right of the gamepad change the mode of the controller. When you select a particular mode, the green LED will flash to show it's waiting for the mode command. If you don't press anything, it will default back to normal in a few seconds. Mode 1 controls the gimbal profile. For the Pilotfly Funny Go, the number 1 is the follow mode, the number 2 is the tilt lock mode, the number 3 is the headlock mode, and the number 4 is my DIY gimbal controller mode. Mode 2 controls the degrees of movement the right joystick uses. The number 1 is 30 degrees, the number 2 is 45 degrees, the number 3 is 90 degrees, and number 4 is 180 degrees. Mode 3 control isn't currently used. Mode 4 controls the point recorder, which we'll go into in more detail later on. But number 1 is used to add a point, number 2 deletes a point, number 3 clears all points, and number 4 isn't currently used. If you press and hold the select button, you can use the left analog stick to adjust roll by moving it up and down. If you press the start button, it will return the gimbal to its original position when it was initialized. So let's see exactly how mode 2 works. First we'll select the mode, then we select 30 degrees. As you can see, this is the most limited movement range. Now let's try 45 degrees, which gives us a little bit more range, but not a ton. Now we'll do 90 degrees, and here you really start to see the larger movements of the gimbal. And finally, we'll do 180 degrees, which is the widest range setting for mode 2. Now onto mode 4, the point recorder. With this, you can record gimbal positions and then quickly switch between them. First move the gimbal using the left joystick to a position. Then use the mode 4, button 1 to add a point. Let's move to another position using the left joystick and then add tilt. Then use mode 4 and button 1 again to add another point. Finally, let's pan down and over to the tripod. Then add our final point using mode 4 and button 1 to add it again. Now you can use the left and right shift buttons, the buttons on the back of the gamepad, to switch between the different points that have been added. The speed that the gimbal moves can be different between each point. The direction pad on the left of the gamepad is used to control the speed of the different elements of the gimbal. Up and down are used to change the speed that the gimbal moves, while left and right change the degrees by which the left joystick moves. It's important to keep in mind that you can easily set this to be faster than the gimbal motors can actually move the camera. When this happens, you'll notice it becomes rough, especially at the beginning. Finally, here's a quick test to show the range of the controller. The spec sheet says about 100 feet, but I've been able to reliably use it 30 to 40 feet without any issues. Your mileage may vary depending on how many other wireless signals are present and where you're using it. So there you have it. Since you've made it this far, why not go all the way and see how to build it? 
As I said, it's pretty easy. Just grab a screwdriver and take the gamepad apart. Make sure not to lose the USB adapter that's stashed in the battery compartment. Here's your disassembly tip of the day. Sometimes, if you can't get a small Phillips head screw out using the right tool, use the wrong tool. A small flathead screwdriver can sometimes get in and make better contact to get those hard ones out without stripping. So now that we've removed all the screws, open up the gamepad and take a look inside. Remove the foam from the pins of the Bluetooth B and place it in the connector. Make sure it matches the diagram on the circuit board. Make sure all the pins are touching first, and then push in the middle with even force until it's mounted snugly. There is also a small switch located on it. Make sure it's switched towards the AT letters. We're going to need to be able to access this switch again, so we're going to cut the case a bit so we don't have to open it each time. Now with the plastic removed, you can easily get something in to switch the mode of the Bluetooth module. That's it for the hardware. Just put it back together, test the buttons, and screw back in those screws. Now for computer time. Connect a gimbal using simple BGC GUI and make sure to read all of the current settings. Then switch to Profile 1 and make sure that Roll, Pitch, and Yaw are all set to Angle Mode. When that's done, click Right to save your changes to the gimbal and repeat this process for the other two profiles. Now take the USB adapter that came with the gamepad and insert it into the programming slot. Make sure to orient it in the correct way. Look at the video and make sure yours looks the same. Next, make sure your Arduino software is set to use the Arduino Leonardo board, and make sure that you have the correct serial port selected. Then, go to your computer's Bluetooth settings and open up the properties for your gimbal's Bluetooth adapter. On the Bluetooth tab, copy down the unique identifier that it shows. We'll need this for the setup. Now we're going to install the setup software that will bind the controller to the gimbal. You need to change the BT address value in the Arduino interface to match the unique identifier you just wrote down. The format is slightly different, so look at the examples I have above. Once that's done, click the Upload button and you're off to the races. When the upload completes, click the serial monitor to see the setup's progress. You should see it displaying a series of numbers, which lets you see what step it's on, and then a series of commands. This process is kind of a pain, but you should only have to do it once, and if you ever have to do it again to bind to a new device, you'll probably think it's much easier. Pay attention to each command and the response. It should be exactly the same as you see here in the video. You should see the name of your Bluetooth gimbal controller if everything is working correctly. In my example, it says Funny Go. After each command, you should see an OK. If you see it say Fail or something different from what's in the video, just click Upload and try again. Exit the Arduino software and unplug the gamepad. Then flip the switch on the Bluetooth adapter where we cut the hole. This should change it from AT mode to non-AT mode. And once that's done, plug it in and open the Arduino software again. Once the file is loaded, click Upload and we're almost there. When the upload completes, click the serial monitor and you should see it display the message Time Out. Now turn on your gimbal. If all the stars have aligned, it should connect within a couple of seconds. Congratulations! You're now officially a maker, having built your very own 3-axis gimbal controller. Hopefully you've enjoyed the tutorial, so make sure to rate, comment, and subscribe.